Okay, great. Mr. Mayor, can you use the microphone, please? Thank you, sir. It is Tuesday, April 28th, 2 p.m. This meeting is called to order. May I have the roll call, please? Mayor Hendricks? Here. Vice Mayor Here. Andrews? Here. Commissioner Price? Here. Commissioner Hodges? Here. Commissioner Douthard? Present. Larry Ralph, I just want to let you know I'm here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Presser, do we have any public comments? I don't know if no, can. sir, we do not. Okay. Okay. Topics for discussion today are uh, review changes made in the Board of Commissioners policy handbook. Floor is open for discussion. And uh, hopefully everyone's reviewed it. I just have two little changes, and it's just kind of the order. It's not a lot. It's mess. It's <laughs> the first one is, let's look at the packet. Page 5 of 26 of our packet. We kind of rearranged the bullet points there. Okay, um, we did it wrong. <laughs> it, um, uh, let's see. If you were to, at the top of page 25, put a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven next to all those bullet points, this will make it easier for me to explain it. One is fine. Number two, the first sentence in number two is what I had hoped to put at the end of bullet point number four, because they both had to do with promises. And then the, 
the red line part on number two then becomes bullet point number two, and then I thought bullet point number three should go right after that. Because it's about giving an opinion and give, I just thought the bullet points were kind of out of sync the first time, and now they really are. So the first bullet point's fine, the Board of Commissioners will endeavor to inform. The second bullet point starts with commission members frequently are asked to explain an action. The third bullet point should go right after the second one. I mean, the third should be part of number two. And then the existing number two in black, commission members shall make no promises. I thought that was better after bullet point number four. Okay, that's all. It just kind of rearranged it even worse than. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was said combined two and three, so that's what I had did. So I could do that right there and make it sound better. Okay, cool. Any others? Just one more. Okay. And that's on page 10 of 26. In the center of the page. Just check the capitalization on that sentence. There's a lot of words capitalized that, I'm just a natural born editor, I'm sorry. But. <laughs> Candidate forums will be video live streamed. Does that make sense? To not capitalize all those words in the sentence? Okay, that's it. Do we also want to have that on channel 640? Should that be in there? Uh, I think we got we have that up under number six. Government access. Ch oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. I'm, well, I would say if we're going to live stream it, we should probably have it on the television channel I agree. too. Well, that is the government access channel, 640. Yeah. Okay. Well. So we should also have it on our website. Well, I think video live streaming is on the website. Is that not correct, Bob? Yes. So we do need channel 640 put in there, I well, would think. The live stream also, well, there are some people that watch 640, and there are some people just watch it off the computer and, and pull it off our website. Yeah. And also can be viewed on the YouTube channel too. So um, the, the only problem, uh, as we mentioned before, with Spectrum and 640, we're trying to get them to make those changes so it's it's uh, an easier setup and we've been working back and forth with them, as well as the other issues we have with Spectrum. So. Okay. Uh, so what would, would you like to give some input on this, on your feelings on whether I think, we should? Uh, is there a way that, because it might end up being something else. It might not be channel 640, okay. but, uh, you know, is, can we just put uh, and broadcast uh, with Spectrum, I guess, or, or uh, I'm just trying to think of what we could put in there. I guess we can always change it later, you know, do a resolution or, if the and channel number yeah. changes. Or just add, we'll and be live streamed on available. our website and the government access channel. The That's government fine. access channel is channel 640. Well, currently, but right. that might change, so. Maybe what we do is the city maintains a government access channel, comma, currently channel 640. Okay, that sounds good. That way, that's up under number six, because we don't want to okay. confuse it. No, under, under, under six, you're just going to put the word currently in front of the words channel 640. And then the red part, candidate forms will be video live streamed um, and on the and government. And on. Yeah. yeah. Sounds and good. And on the government. Yeah. Got to clarify that. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Is that it? Is that it? I believe so. I'm looking for
Thank you, Helen. Yep. Okay, I have one. It's it's a huge one. Okay. Uh, page 25 of 26, agenda preparation. Um, middle of the page, distribution deadline allows should be sufficient instead of efficient time. <laughs> That's all I've got. Anyone else? I'm good. Okay, I guess we have a consensus then that the handbook is done. I'll bring it to the regular meeting for a vote. Okay. The May meeting? Yes. Okay, next for topics of discussion is goals and objectives. And I mentioned at the last meeting for everyone, if they could, when I can't theirs, hear the mayor. Can you speak up to the mic, uh, Commissioner Calvert? Can hear you. Yeah. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, goals and objectives. And I mentioned at the last meeting for everyone to just make bullet points of topics they want to uh, pursue in the next couple of years. Um, ho hopefully everyone has that together so that it can be presented at this time. Mayor, the uh, information uh, that we gave you today uh, we've got this from finance department this morning, the revision. There were some changes to it. Updating commissioners and some different language on there, and I think some different things. City manager can go over what they've added and stuff. Okay. Is that, that, is that on uh, this handout? It's this one. That'll be in the budget book, whatever you change it to. I don't have a copy of it. Do you have an extra? Okay, I got it. I got it now. Mr. Mayor, um, this is sort of the format. Well, it is this is the format that they've used in the budget book. Um, so I think what uh, Walt and Clara did was try to uh, put together those items that you spoke about and put it basically in the uh, the format that they use for the purposes of the budget. I think you'll see, I think we've got everything here, but uh, for the sake of making sure, and, and again, you can change this format too. This is just what they've used probably year after year, and Commissioner uh, Hodges might be more aware of it than I, but uh, I noticed it was in last year's budget book and this year's as well. Okay. Has everyone had a chance to review this? No. I, I think everybody just got it. Uh, so. I just got it too. I do not have a copy of it. Let me uh, get an email to you so you have it. Do you have it? Mm -hmm. Patty's going to email it to you right away. Sorry. That, uh, that we have, um, that each department, um, you know, has to uh, list and, and, and trying to fulfill their overall goals and objectives that, that the commission wants. So basically, I went through, I took all the notes that the commission made as far as their concerns, 
and uh, and I tried to kind of rank them the way I the way I heard that the commission um, talking about these. In other words, it seemed like the first one that Mrs. Hodges complained about the infrastructure and nothing getting done. Um, and by the way, a little bit I I I also agree with that um, because in my mind we have too many. Um, capital projects that roll over from year to year, and that's been a sense of my frustration um, since I've gotten here. So, um, but when I went through this, you know, also, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, uh, there were some other comments that that uh, that impacted the infrastructure and the CIP, and uh, one uh, Mayor Hendricks brought up is objective number two which we would like to put in the CIP and start planning for, which is the uh, Marina High and Dry. So it seemed like to me, and I could be wrong, but I tried to rank these um, the way I saw it. And, and, and of course, you're, you're welcome to, uh, you know, to change these, but it seemed like the common thing that I kept hearing last week was the infrastructure and then um, trying to improve the, uh, the, uh, the city and the community's uh, understanding of and communications. That's why I kind of ranked uh, the goal of inter internal and ex external communications and trying to uh, get the community more involved in community events. And that seemed to be an overriding, and some of the objectives there were things that I heard, you know, having more town hall meetings to try to get people more involved. Um, you talked about changing the meeting times to also to accommodate people. And then objective number three, the financial uh, sustainability. Again, uh, the comments that I heard was uh, more and better uh, reporting, but I heard improving the financial condition of the city. And one of the ways that, that I heard uh, that was mentioned over and over was uh, get more grant funding, which I think uh, Commissioner Price mentioned. Um, so that, that'd be objective number one. And then other comments that I heard that dealt with, uh, you know, under financial st uh, sustainability was as far as uh, having uh, better reports to track uh, city positions and comparisons to previous years. And I, I think uh, Mr. Andrews brought up that comment. Um, I thought that growth management really wasn't mentioned, so I, I kind of threw that in myself. And some of the comments that there that as far as um, pertaining to uh, to growth management, and then human capital. Uh, some of the comments there, as far as the her, uh, employee handbook, and consistently uh, make sure that discipline is provided. Uh, and again, Commissioner Andrews seemed to make some points as far as uh, some of the objectives um, in that category um, last last uh, week as well. And then the last one, and I'm going over these just real briefly, but again. I'm, I tried to fit in a lot of the comments that you made. And then the last one, the safety and health, healthy living. Again, the mayor brought up uh, some of the road conditions, some of the signs, and some of the signs even in the uh, waterways as far as the um, don't know wake zones and, and the such. And also some of the speeding, the mayor mentioned that as well. So again, I went back to my notes and I tried to get and, and assemble everybody's input and try to get these into a consensus. And again, I try to rank it the way I saw it, but it doesn't mean that's the way you want it. And, and actually, these, these really aren't ranked in any particular order. It, the main thing is that you have them. And so when we ask this information for the departments, we, we ask them just to give it to us. Um, and they may only have three or four of these, and maybe not all six like there is here. Um, but the objectives uh, that mainly appealed uh, or that are a concern to their department. But since these are six that you're, and by the way, the board last year really didn't do this, and I think that this is a better job that you guys do this because you'll set the tone for the departments. So the departments have already done this, but it was a first round draft. Now, you know, after you um, chew this up or, or make changes to this or solidify this, then. We're going to go back and ask the departments to um, may, maybe make changes that co-align co um, co with uh, 
with yours because your objectives and your goals are now their goals and they have to accomplish things to you. Um, in other words, um, some of the signage and everything that the mayor talked about, you know, clearly that would be probably public works and community, uh, community development that would have to include those in, in their goals and objectives as well. I think it's all about having a shared vision and you all set the tone, you set the vision, it's our job to carry that vision out. And, uh, and, and that should, at the end of the year or the end of three years, depending on how, how many multi-year goals that, that we have, but you see some accomplishments that come out of it. Uh, as I look through here, I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing yet because I just got it, but one thing I am looking at and I don't see in here is uh, city parks. City parks is on the first one. Am I? Yeah. I saw it in here, but it took I'm a skimming to over, so I may have. Number four. Okay, good. That would be a member of infrastructure of objective number number four. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see it now. Thank you. Yeah, on that note, Mr. Mayor, you know, I got I got stopped today in Walmart by um by a resident and um she was actually getting uh, supplies to make uh, an obstacle course for her, uh, for her kids. And uh, she was telling me how it's, it's amazing because as, as we're all kind of stuck inside, people are out walking a little bit more and, and you get to meet more people and people that even know her in the neighborhood. And she was surprised to see as many younger kids that are, that are now, now living here, which first of all, I think is awesome. I think that that's a really good sign in the development of the city. But, um, one thing that, um, John, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, that you brought up when you first brought up this, this topic on pocket parks, which I, I've always thought was a great idea, but, you know, some of them can be dog parks. I, I would like to put a little playground equipment in, in some of these things, um, you know, a seesaw here, a slide there, just something small, only to, to encourage some of our families to, you know, go over there and, and do that. Um, we can get, those are easy grants, uh, you know, I got... When I was running the rec center, I got the grant to build the playground over here. Um, I think we got like eighty thousand dollars to build that playground, which you know all came from all came from the Florida Parks and Recreation. So I think that's something great. But you know, uh, as far as this is concerned, I, I, you know, I'm, it's a it's an outline, it's a structure, and I think it, it does it does hit on some of the major points. Um, but I mean, we could make it a lot easier and just basically hey, look. You know, what's going to happen this year? More importantly than any other year, maybe. Well, I, I would say in our history, because we've never really had a shutdown like this of this kind of proportion, uh, but we need to be fiscally responsible. Uh, we need to communicate better, and I mean across the board, between us and staff, between the staff and the city and, and the residents, and uh, people need to know what's going on because there's a lot of doubt and there's a lot of, you know, even, even today we're sitting up here talking about the beaches opening and none of us even know. <laughs> I mean, we're having a discussion about it. We can't even pin that down. So we need to be able to do that. Uh, we have to develop new revenue streams, right? We need to have consistent and strong leadership and build morale around here. And mainly, we need to follow the charter because we have gone completely off course on that. And, you know, little things like, you know, going out for bids. Yeah, I mean, there are some exceptions where you don't have to go out for bids, but going out for bids isn't a bad thing, okay? It's lazy not to sometimes, you know, it, it, it costs the city money. Right now we're in no position to be overspending or overindulging on anything. Um, you know, I think, I think we got to keep our eye on the ball and, you know, our leadership through this is going to really, I mean, hopefully prove to be very essential to getting us through this without really any significant bumps in the road. So that's all I had to add. But I, yeah, I, I don't really think this is bad. I think this is a pretty good outline. I think the goals are all right there. I might want to add a couple of objectives here and there, but eh, we could do that as the year goes on. But I, I don't mind it at all. Yeah, and as you spoke about the parks too, Doug, there, uh, there are some public-private initiatives 
initiatives as well as the grants. Uh, I've spoken to a few people that said their company would love to be able to buy us a, a swing set or a gym set or even uh, those, those outdoor workout stations where as you're doing your jogging, you can stop and do some chin-ups or whatever. I probably won't be using those, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I would <laughs> But apparently there are people that do. So, um... Or yeah, it kayak looks... launching docks. Yes. I see people really struggling to do that in our pocket parks, and they're standing on... They're standing on our drainage to do it. So if we could... In a couple of places, all you need to do is get a little outside, outside uh, uh, rug, whatever, and fasten it to the seawall and slide it up and down well, that. That's what I'm. If, that's if, it. Yeah. If we could, <laughs> I got that in my backyard. Yeah. You know. So, so if we could help people get out there and you know do those kind of things, that'd be great. So. Uh, yeah, so I, I like this. Um, I put together some of it's kind of vague. I mean, when I ranked the rankings that I did of high, medium, and low, they were specific things. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, this is kind of we can use that as a guideline yeah. too. I just wanted to have something that was a little bit more concise for the department directors to go out. Right. But I've already been sending the messages that you all have been giving me as we, you know, we talk in our staff meeting and so forth. So they're getting the message, and we're we're moving forward with that message. So. Uh, this is just kind of for the, you know, the overall 30,000 foot level, but, you know, we definitely have your comments and the, and the precise uh, individual items that we've discussed in the last two weeks, three weeks, so. Yeah, I'm satisfied with the overview. I think it looks good. And like the vice mayor said, if there's something that you see, hey, we need, we want to add this to it. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It's a living document, yeah. and you know uh, we can do that. And as we go through the budget process this summer, you know there might be something that comes up, and we can add it at that time or any time in the future. Yeah, because this is very, very general. I mean, the safety and healthy living object, objective one to encourage the protection and preservation of the public's health, safety, and welfare by ensuring the adequate resources are appropriated for public safety assets. That, that's hardly an objective. That sounds like, I, would rather I, don't see. I don't recall us even talking about that, okay? No, I think it's So that's water sort of like, I put a line through that. In, I mean, so, let's get okay. some specific, you know. We'll retool that last group. <laughs> and then there's stuff here about the health care plans encourage more information about health care under financial sustainability? Right, we did talk about that here about, you know, looking at getting the best bang for our buck with dealing with our health care. Yeah, I think Mr. Andrews brought up the point that some people um, didn't like the health care plans and PIPs. Um, a year or two ago, and that's why I picked up. I believe they said they hated it. No. <laughs> well, employees always hate their health care plan. I mean, no, the, the company you actually makes used the to, we plan. actually used to have a really, a really good health care program. Yeah. I, I know that they made some changes to it, that's all. I mean, you, I mean that's something you, you seek out every year as it, your old plan comes up for renewal. Correct. I mean, you, that's a, a natural thing to do. So it's, it's what we can afford. Basically. afford and looking at and, our size and our experience. And offering several plans to the employees and they pick their own. Right. I mean, no one's happy with the, with the Cadillac plan because you've got to pay so much. But some people need the Cadillac plan and then other young, healthy people can take the kind of the lesser plan. The road, you know, but there should be multiple care. plans offered. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's just a... Just, I don't just, know if that makes sense with mm -hmm. 80 employees, but... Just for the uh, commission's information... Okay. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, just for your information, that year we were facing a 10% increase in health care costs that would have, you know, would have cost us uh, probably, um, you know, additional $75,000, maybe even $80,000. Um, and I was down in uh, uh, Naples when I got those numbers, and I went up to uh, Florida, uh, the Florida Blue people and said, we just cannot do that. And they said, well, 
you know, you're in a plan right now. You've been in that plan for years. Why are you in there anyway? And um, you could jump to this next plan, and it would only impact two or three people. Now, that's what we initially thought. Um, you know, there were some people, there were some deductibles that had increased, but they were going to increase anyway right. in the other plans. Yeah. So um, we, made, we saved $55,000 by, by making and going to, to that plan. And we felt also a need that the board at that time was actually thinking of subsidizing some of the, the cost to the employees. And we really didn't want to see that as an option either. So, you know, you know, I, I think some people uh, had to experience some pain, but overall, I don't think too many people were impacted by it. Well, that should probably go under human capital anyway. Well, maybe financial, yeah. I, I don't know how big of a financial. But, um, okay. So as the city manager said, this is a living document that's going to change throughout the year. So, uh, and we can add to it or, or take from it as, as, as we need to. It's, uh, this is going to be a tough year for Madeira Beach. We've already taken, what, uh, $300,000 hit, roughly. I think it was three hundred thousand and and or close to three hundred, and then five hundred with salaries and yeah, everything I it was else. Yeah, uh, the, the, yeah. If we can go back next week uh, in, in the beginning of May and and have the beaches open with the parking machines back on board, then um, you know what we originally had had this projected if it was going to go past May, and I think I sent an email to the to the board that we were looking at about one one point one million as far as an overall loss. And if we can get the parking machines back up with the beaches and everything, you know, I still haven't finished the numbers and I'm hoping at the, at the May 12th meeting we can, we can have better numbers um, and more, more accurate, but uh, it's clearly not as bad as we're, what we originally projected. So, um, you know, we're kind of still hoping that if we get the machines up and the beaches back open that, that this loss would still be in that 500,000 to 600,000 range. So there's some other good things that are happening on, in the revenue part uh, of, the, of the picture that, that might help. And, you know, we have some ideas on, on how to fight this. The city managers uh, instituted a freeze on, on non-reoccurring, um, you know, uh, expenditures or, or requests and a freeze on, um, on hiring. Personnel. Right. And uh, I just wanted to remind the board, too, that what I was going to kind of suggest, and I don't want to jump too much ahead, but we still have 300000 in the fund balance sitting for the BP money, and we never really tapped in and used that. And we really can use that for anything. Um, I know about, about a year or two ago, I looked back and I was asking all the other municipalities what they were using that for, and, and basically found out that it's not really tied. You can use it for anything. And so uh, the auditor even suggested that, uh, that that's just sitting in fund balance, it's not doing anything, so that would be a solution to take that money. And some of the departments that have been hurt by this, that when we have to do a budget amendment, we can, we can hit that, that account. Well, I think what, what we need to do is look at those numbers when we finally get a good, you know, not that the, the numbers you have aren't good, but, you know, we get a fine tune because we know where the end is now. We didn't know that before. And so we can, you know, deal with those and, and then come up with recommendations and uh, for the commission so they can look at different options on how we can deal with the shortfalls. Well, we've also got some a couple of projects that are on here, the marina, for example, that's going to take some capital expenditures. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the old saying, it takes money to make money, and we will have to have an investment on that. And I know there are a lot of folks that, are fighting that happening, but we need to make the tough decisions and people have got to realize, and this is a perfect perfect example, we've got to generate new revenue streams. Absolutely. This city cannot live on parking lot revenue. And that's why I pushed hard for a high dry. And I'm sorry, I feel for the people uh, along 150th that don't want that, 
but it will be an attractive building and it will be a money producing building for this city and it's something we really need. So um, I think that's something to keep in mind for that, for that uh, excess BP money that we've got to is possibly a down payment on that. Yeah, I don't mind having generic conversations like this. I, I, in fact, I think they're, they're helpful. But, you know, I think one thing that we need to do, and if we can do this in the next workshop, that would be great. You know, and this piece of paper is great, and it gives you kind of an idea, but, you know, I'm, I'm scaling, sc sc rolling down it here, and um, there's only a few of these percentages that are under 50%, and they're tiny ones. The BOC numbers tiny, the uh, parks number is tiny, um, and I see a lot that are in the 60s, and, you know, even the fire fire department, which is probably our biggest expenditure, is at 63 percent. Vice Mayor, if I, if I may, that's just an example. I oh, these are you, actual numbers. Those aren't actual numbers. Oh, okay, because I, I was just going to see if that's the type of report that would be good. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and, well, hang on a second. The, the, the idea is I would kind of like to do a a full glance here because I think that there was a lot of no I'm going to say it point blankly there was there was a lot of minutia that we were handed in the past and there was a lot of people covering for other people in the past look this is a job okay I mean you know if the mayor comes down hard on you or one of the commissioners comes down hard on you then that's part of part of the job okay I'm not a huge fan of the fact that, you know and and I love our staff, but I'm not a huge fan of the fact that we had people sitting home collecting paychecks. I think, that, I think we should have done what every other business did. These are, this is a business. It's a $24 million business. And all of a sudden, we're worried about certain, certain costs. And in turn, we had a commission praise our staff for coming in $3.5 million over budget on the Crystal Island project. They were getting praised for it. Okay? And then we turned around and we hired a consultant for $197,000. And then I just hear Walter say, oh, well, it was $55,000 to, to keep our insurance for the whole, for the whole city, $55,000 to keep the whole, $55,000. We spent $50,000 on a marina investigation that was a fraud audit that never came, came to fruition. I think we need to get to the bottom of all this and take a real good snapshot of this. And we got to take a look to where we're, you know, as far as the human capital portion of this, some changes may have to be made. They really do. Okay? We are going to be battling a budget that is probably on course to doing what it's supposed to do. We'll probably manage our, manage our revenue line, although we have had a couple of um, significant budget amendments. But... I'm going to tell you, or I'm sorry, our expenditure line, our revenue line is going to be disastrous this year. We missed all of spring break, basically. Okay? So where's that money going to come from? How do we balance our books like that? And I think that, you know, saying, okay, we have $300,000 here that we can use for whatever we want. Well, we also have a reserve fund. We have an emergency reserve fund that we can use that I don't know if we've tapped into or not. There are ways to get to the money, but the bottom line is, we have got to be better at conserving our dollars here while we come up with these new revenue streams in order to produce more stuff. Because, you know, we're going to be looking into our citizens' eyes here in a few months and saying, telling them that their millage rate's going up again. And I'll tell you why. It wasn't fun this past time telling them. Now it's even going to be worse because now we still have projects on the horizon, but the Crystal Island project took up the bulk of that $15 million. Plus, we got a million dollar uh, balloon payment on that 15 million, so that looks like 14 million now, okay? I want a comprehensive look of all of our financials. I really want to be able to walk through that bit by bit and piece by piece in order to determine where we are and where we can make cuts and how we can salvage this year. Thank you. Point well taken. Is there any other discussion on goals and objectives? Well, I didn't make my bullet point list because I only had four things, but I did rank them. I mean, I ranked, I, mine were kind of included in, in your, Mr. Mayor, and your Commissioner Andrews. So I, I sort of sat down and thought, this is what I think is high, this is mid, and this is low. And I kind of looked at everything that you passed out and what uh, Commissioner, um, 
Hodges said, and then of course my own stuff. If, I don't know if we want to talk about that. We we kind of already did. <laughs> sure. Is it is it on this list anywhere? No, 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 no. I just came prepared to okay. rank. <laughs> okay. I'll just run through what I think is high. Okay. Grants. Um, I think high should be, and this isn't on our list, but COVID-19 assistance to our businesses. Do we have any way of helping our businesses? Do we, can we tap somebody who can help them fill out these forms and get some of this money? Is that something that the, the county is doing that we can ask? I know the Florida League of Cities has a phone call every, every week. I don't know if that's, if they're addressing it there. I don't know if we're on top of it, you know? Uh, yes, we, we <laughs> do have those available resources on our, our webpage. Okay. Uh, it's a separate page to it. I did they're see also that. being assisted by the Chamber of Commerce uh, and going through it. And the rest of the meeting this afternoon, which I'll find out about from the Board of County Commissioners in Pinellas County, they, they set aside, I think it was $350 million uh, one, uh, in two programs. One program is to take care of uh, individuals that have low income or without a job, and they've been affected by COVID-19. Uh, it's a simple process. The, the way it was explained to me, now I don't know what they've approved yet, but the, it was supposed to be 211, you'd call up, 211 and they take the application right over the phone and they would actually write a check to your landlord for your rent. They'd write a check to the power company or the water utilities, whatever it might be. So it was, you know, you apply, but they pay it directly out of their, this particular fund to those particular, particular vendors. And that was up to $4,000 for individuals. And then there's a uh, expenditure that they had of uh, for businesses, small businesses, and I think the cap that I had heard that they were recommending was no more than 20 employees. Uh, it was geared more for the mom and pop business, and uh, that was something that they would apply through the Department of Economic uh, Opportunity through the county. And uh, but it was a simple application, and they could do it online. And if that gets approved, that's up to $5,000. And again, it's a hardship case. Uh, you need it for rent. You need it for whatever to get your business back up and running. Uh, that's what that offer was. And we haven't put anything out on it yet because they spent all day on, on dealing with pools right. and beaches. So as soon as we get that, though, we'll make sure that, that information gets sent out, too. Robin Miller from the Tampa Bay Chamber has uh, really been on top of a lot of the, uh, uh, the situations with the businesses, and we've been in constant communication with her and, and uh, Gary from Treasure Island and Alex from down in uh, uh, St. Pete Beach, the managers. And uh, so we Maybe we should host them. some sort of a this is how you do it kind so, of a thing, or come with your applications, we'll help you. Write this stuff so you and get that's paid. Basically, what we we're trying to gear up our website for, but okay. you know, I think now is probably the time if they've approved it, and we can get on and maybe yeah. even do a live uh, event with Facebook or something where we could walk them through those, and then you know, possibly try to meet with them if they're one of our local businesses and uh, try to help them out. The key thing is we want them to succeed. You know, we don't have our mom and pop businesses. You know, we're going to lose that uh, that idea of what we stand for here in this community yeah. and uh, you know we started with small fishermen is what started this community and now it's kind of carried over to the business uh, uh, that we we have here in town and I just think it's ultra important to keep that culture going yeah. and, uh, and tourism and hospitality and whatever we, whatever we can. Yeah. well you know the tourism boat you know they get a little piece of the pie and stuff but you know I think really our business is so we can get them open and get them running according to the guidelines that they have to follow, whatever those are going to be. Um, the governor supposedly is, is making a, a press conference with an announcement tomorrow, I guess, so we'll find out because all the businesses are kind of geared under the uh, safer place that the governor did. So, and that one expires on the first as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see what that's at. But I think all of these programs are good, but the federal government sent the money to the county to be distributed. And so that's, you know, 
we kept trying to find out how can we do our own program here and you know obviously you know they just the county has the department of economic opportunity they have the 211 so it's just i guess easier for them to do it versus us yep and i have a lot of confidence in our county commissioners so um if they're starting some sort of a program or something i I'd, I'd Hopefully, we can find something for municipalities as well. Well, and we, we <laughs> there the are there's public okay. assistance grants through the feds that okay. we're waiting on that to come down from Washington. There's also there is a conference call today with the League of Cities at five o'clock, uh, and I plan on being at to see what information that they have. And there's also another pot of money uh, that's also geared to help counties and municipalities in dealing with their losses. And then there's the regular FEMA pot, which is what we've been geared up for and doing all our paperwork for. But they, you know, they haven't stopped to start receiving it. They're taking care of everyone else right now, and then we'll be hopefully the next ones in line. Okay. All right. So it was pretty much grants, assistance to our businesses, the new revenue streams that we talked about. I think town halls, in, in my book, when Doug brought that up. I think that's something we could do that doesn't cost us a lot of money other than uh, turning the lights on in this room. I think that's something we need to schedule and start having. Um, I've, I've got a question on that if you don't mind me interrupting you. Sure. Uh, I think somewhere in here I, I wrote three down because I was kind of figuring quarterly and I, and I know you know when we get into the election cycle again which we have every year uh, we want to you know that was a good point that uh, Vice Mayor Andrews brought up when we were finally getting to the town hall. That probably wasn't the appropriate time to do it. So that's why I put down three. But I, again, that's up for you all to make a decision and tell me and we'll get it done. So. Sure. City cleanup. And I got a little note, not just Marina, but uh, our parks as well. I've got budget cuts uh, down as a topic that I think is high on our list. We're going to have to have to do something and like Doug mentioned too many chefs not enough cooks uh, we need to start getting people to step up their game and then decide who you know yeah, who I think we need we, who's doing the job we got a lot of people splitting jobs I noticed too which is kind of I don't know what that's about but maybe they're just wearing two hats and we're already stretched thin I don't know that's why I'm saying I want to talk about it um, and then also high on my list was the press release uh, correcting the marina, quote, audit, and uh, I think specifically apologizing to Captain Dave Marsicano. I agree. And that was my high list, you know, um, as far as what I think there's something we can just start working on quickly or that would make, I don't know, make a, a pretty big impact and start on it. Yep. I agree. Do we have a consensus on doing that? We yes. can go ahead and take yes. care of it now. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Do you want to do that as a commission? We can do a press conference if you want and have the, you know, I wasn't here during that time frame, so I, I want it to seem genuine. Well, I would think we could do it in one of our regular press releases that Mr. Presser puts out yep. and just email it to everyone. Okay. And we'll put and it just from the commission. That clarify. Yeah. Clarify that it we didn't lose the five hundred thousand dollars. So anyone else? So I got it. Okay, other discussions? Is there anything else anyone would like to bring up? Yes, I, I would like to ask a couple questions, please. Okay. Commissioner Douthard has a couple questions. Okay, you have the um, this, this is The question is directed to Commissioner Price. You said you had a conflict for Tuesday night meeting. I didn't get the name of the organization whose meetings you have a conflict with. Could I get that, please? I don't... Sure, it's the Old Salts Fishing Foundation. They have their meetings on the very same night we have our commission meetings. I used to go to them. Okay. I enjoy the group. It's a, a group that does a lot to our, for our city and gives a lot back. 
did you check to see if they could change their meetings to accommodate your public obligation? No, I did not. I think I'd rather ask four okay. individuals to change, and it's not a public obligation. I mean, when I ran for this seat, Commissioner Douthert, I, I fully knew good and well that we were allowed to make our own rules about when a meeting begins, ends, how long they're going to be, what's discussed. So um, I, I came into this not, not uh, holding the, the Tuesday night open in my life forever. And I was, uh, it, it doesn't make any I difference to anybody else. I, I understand. I just think that the, the public has a right to know why a, a newly elected official thinks that the private obligations are more important than the one she was elected to. It's not in the charter, and that has been changed. Thank you. Other discussions? There's something I'd like to bring up. Um, regarding when we open. I spoke with John's Pass Association. That's all the mer uh, merchants in John's Pass Village. Uh, and they have agreed to give all the Madeira Beach residents a 10% discount. So uh, I would hope folks, when we do open back up, shop local, uh, eat local, play local, but all the merchants down there, you got Christmas shopping you could do early, go down there when they open back up while the tourists aren't here and enjoy John's Pass Village and show your driver's license and get a 10% discount in the, in the village. And that's something I wanted to mention. That's great. So if there are no other discuss discussions, this meeting is adjourned. Start our special meeting? Sure. Okay, let's readjourn at uh, 3 o'clock.
Mayor Hendricks. Here. Vice Mayor Andrews. Here. Commissioner Price. Here. Commissioner Hodges. Here. Commissioner Douthert. Here. Here. Clara Ralph, I'm here for the record too. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Okay, we're open for public comment. Okay, no public comments, okay. Uh, the agenda items, uh, item A, approval of contract for interim city attorney professional legal services. Floor is open for discussion. I make a motion for the approval of the contract for interim city attorney professional legal services. Second. City clerk, will you call the roll? Vice Mayor Andrews? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Douthard? No. Commissioner Price? Yes. Mayor Hendricks? Yes. Next item on the agenda is Resolution 2020-08 Amnesty Program for the Marina. Mr. Daniels, will you uh, take the floor on this, please? Sure. Um, as we discussed uh, previously, uh, two meetings ago when we dealt with the four individuals that we knew of, but we didn't have the form out. I've now, the, the top copies should be the four that had already filled out the form, and then the rest have come in, and I've outlined them in the resolution. Um, I don't have my copy of the resolution here, but uh, Madam Clerk, can you read the header on the resolution, please? Your microphone, please. Pulling it up. Mm. Resolution 2020-08, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, initiating an amnesty program to assist individuals and businesses that rent dock and dry space from the city. This resolution will authorize the city manager to work with the businesses and individuals allowing assistance up to and including one month rent. Mr. Mayor, um, some of these, um, most of them are the charters and, and uh, the Dolphin Adventure. Um, some have not paid the April rent. I think I specified in the resolution uh, where they were, so it'll be credited the April rent, and uh, the ones that had already paid the April rent will get a credit for the May rent. Um, there was, I think, one or two parties that had asked for two months, and my authorization was for one month, uh, and I figured if we were still in dire straits, we can do another application and come back before the commission. See one here for Sea Adventures for two months. Um, right. I, I only took into account one month on it, and uh, if this gets approved, I'll be more than happy to explain that and um, and deal with it the way I mentioned. Okay. All these applications have been verified. Yes. As as request that says, <clears throat> uh, paraphrasing, my company has shut down as not essential until further notice due to virus, I am unemployed. So who's, I mean, here's someone saying that they were 
had their own company and it had to shut down. Do we know what company this was? Which Do we, one are you on? I'm Lori George and Charlie Wilkinson. Right. Uh, They're asking for both live aboard uh, forgiveness and dry storage. Right. Um, and they were, apparently they've been long term uh, tenants of ours, I guess for lack of a better term. And um, I know I was told what business he was in that was shut down, but it involved the governor's order that, you know, where he closed all non-essential businesses, and that's really what sent, sent them into having their problem. But is he self-employed or, I mean, I'm just. Yes, he was self-employed. I just Got can't it. remember what Got the it. actual business was. Okay. I'm sorry. I just, it just was so vague. Most of these are very clear. This is what happened to me and, you know, but that one just kind of. And all the, I'm sorry. Question uh, on this resolution. If these people apply for funding and they get it, do they then do they go back and pay us? You know, if they go out and get the grant from the government, you know, why are we doing, you know, I think that needs to be in this resolution. If they receive money from the government because their business is closed down, it reimburse us for the month's rent that we win. If I may, Mr. Mayor, I don't think we contemplated having them pay us back. Um, most of these are three, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars maybe. Um, I don't know how big of a company Boat Club of America is. I don't want to make the same mistake as paying the the Lakers <laughs> like yeah. the federal government did, but if. If this is just a franchise, then it's a, a different story, obviously, but I don't want to forgive right. a big company. Right. Uh, I think this is an individual owner of a small boat club here in Madeira Beach. It's not, uh, it's not a large company or a franchise that I'm aware of. Okay. So, and he's been there for a long time, and I, I do know he's struggling right now. Okay. Because they had to pull all the boats off the water. Mr. Mayor, if I may, um, Commissioner Douthert, I, I get where you're coming from. I kind of thought that myself at one point. Um, it really depends, and I hate the fact that I'm this schooled in it, but I've gone through these uh, processes with the government for these loans. Um, there's only one of the loans that actually accounts for the money uh, that lets you, that, that payroll protection plan. You got to spend 75% of it on payroll. The other 25% can um, be spent on other expenses. Uh, some of these other disaster loans and the likes of that, they don't really have a caveat in there saying you have to pay a certain bill. Um, if there were more, if there was more money at stake here, I'd say yeah, it's probably something to look into. But I mean, we're only I, I think throughout I didn't count them all up. Is it six thousand dollars, Bob? I, I don't even. I think it's less than that, if I recall. Okay. It okay. Between five and six. I mean, I think it would be nice if they do get their loans and they come back and they. And they reimburse us, but I think it's, you know, with all the other things we got going on, it's going to be tough to track. Uh, I notice another one here that apparently has got two months on here, James McNamara. I believe that was the second one, yes. Yeah. Okay. And I'll explain the same process as I will to uh, okay. the Sea Adventure. So if we're basically opening back up it looks like probably on the fourth we don't know that for sure yet i think we have mr. to look Daniel, at this could you have them email that to me also please the resolution that should have been in your packet uh, uh, no, not the resolution oh the applications it's, sure yes please. thank you i would say we tentatively only go for one month on all of these um, absolutely and I find it hard to believe someone's lost 60 charters to date. Okay? Yeah. It's I mean, only you been need a 30 day to clean days. your boat and refuel yeah. and tighten it all up. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so, uh, but still, all right. 
I'm sorry, I stepped away for a minute, but um, I think that was my thought process is, you know, we went through the 30 days. We weren't sure where we were going to be or when the light at the end of the tunnel was going to come. And I think tomorrow after we hear more from the governor, we'll have a better idea on that. And I don't think people are foreclosed from going out on boats. No, but if you're, if you're a charter boat, though, I think there's been some restrictions on that. Yes, they were stopped by the sheriff's office, so they weren't allowed to operate their business. If they were just going out fishing on their own, that would be one thing, but if they were operating their business, they weren't allowed to. It's not considered essential. Yeah, John, that's why Hubbard shut down, because of the, um, in that mandate, I mean, it said right there, charter boats was in the middle of it. Now, I'm not going to say all the charter boats have shut down, uh, but the big ones like Hubbard's Marina did. So, yeah, that's um, that's what that was stated. And that was stated in the resolution, the, the initial one. But I do agree with you. I think, you know, we agreed to one month when we first started. Let's stick with that. If something happens differently than what we expect tomorrow, then we can certainly revisit this. Are we going to be doing a vote on this, or is this just something? No, I think we're going to do a vote. Yeah, you'll have to vote on the resolution. To vote on this? Okay, I'd like to make a motion then that we um, pass resolution 2020-08. I'll, I'll second. second. <laughs> City Clerk, will you call the roll? Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Douthert? No. Vice Mayor Andrews? Yes. Mayor Hendricks? Yes. Next agenda topic is... Uh, Approval for RFP for the City Attorney Professional Legal Services. The floor is open for discussion. If I may, your your uh, your mayorship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to saying your honor, it kind of comes out. All right, all right. Twenty years. <laughs> no, it's, it's twenty years of. The, um. I will tell you, and I kind of apologize, this is I think the third version we've seen of this, but since we, I had more time to work on it, and I got a, a, a really clean version from Ralph Brooks and our clerk, um, which I thought was a better uh, format. What I did was I took <clears throat> the Cocoa Beach format, and I took the format that um, Attorney Brooks prepared, and I merged it into one, I kept some of the Cocoa Beach stuff, and I pretty much incorporated all of Ralph Brooks's uh, draft. Um, and I just think it makes more sense to keep it shorter and sweeter. It shaved off another bunch of pages. So um, I hope everyone had a chance to look at it. I know you just got it yesterday, but I think it makes just a little more sense than the first one we, we looked at. And I think we need to get this out so that people have time to prepare uh, so that when the 30-day period is up and then our interim attorney steps in, we can get a relationship going with whoever is our, turns out to be our final, final attorney. So are you good with it as it reads now? Or do I, you... I am. I, I've got a slightly conflicted view on this. Um, We've waited for a long time for this to come out, and I'm glad we do have a clean copy now. Um, my personal opinion is our, our interim city attorney has all the qualifications that we need. He knows the city. Um, and at this point, I don't really see the reason to spend the money on going out to proposal. Um, you know, I, I think uh, Mr. Trask's background um, with the various cities around here and the length of time he's been with them, I think lends credibility to, to his services and what he can do for us. And um, I would hate to just have him come in here for a couple of months and then all of a sudden, you know, he's gone um, because somebody 
outbid him on, on this proposal right now. Uh, I'm not saying that we don't do this at some point, uh, but right now, given that we have 19,000 other things on our, on our agenda, I would say that we table this for another time. Well, let me ask this, um, City Clerk. How, how long do we typically give businesses to, to turn in a bid once we put it out there? 30 to 60 days. Oh. The newspapers, they've cut down to two days a week where there was seven days a week, and we're having to put in the advertisements much earlier. And, but once we get it advertised, it takes about two weeks. And then the, uh, it'll come to the board soon thereafter for, to go through the proposals. I mean, what kind of deadline do we give? When we publish it, once it gets published, it's about, two, about 10 days to turn in a, 10 to 15 days to turn in a bid. Well, and it could be as long as you short want to. to throw together. An attorney. No. Yeah, that sounds awfully short. To that's for the regular ones. This wasn't the first one with, for, for a city attorney. And somebody had mentioned 30 days. That, that was the only thing I could come up with was 10, 15 days if you're trying to meet a 30-day. But I would say about 30 days would be 45 days, whatever the commission would like. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe we were better off putting the bid out, having it, looking at this in 45 days, or see who applies for, in 45 days. Um, I like Mr. Trask's firm. I just don't know what the, I don't want to pay interim prices from here on out. I don't know what's good. We're going to is, is the process that we're, I, I'm sorry, excuse me. No, is, is, the, is the process that we're um, required to take low bid on this? Is that the procedure? I don't think we have to. I think that's just traditionally what we do. If I, I don't think we have to take low bid. I mean, this is a, well, I mean, if we're doing a request for hiring. proposal, I would think we're almost obligated to take low bid. I mean, that would be what I would think, right? I mean, I don't think that we're allowed to go outside well, of that. Well, I think there's other qualifications. Sure. When you do a request for a proposal, mm -hmm. you know, there, uh, and you, I think you pretty much earmarked those when we were looking at the RFP on what you want uh, by way of the different services and so forth. Um, but, you know, in this circumstance, this is a charter officer. So I think just like any other charter office officer, you can decide uh, you know, what you would like to, uh, how you want to handle it as a commission. So obviously, you know, when uh, you want to hire an attorney, you can go hire an attorney. You don't have to follow a process. Generally, you follow a process on everything you try to do, but, you know, it's, you're not bound by that, uh, the best that I'm aware of, and, um, you know, Ralph might have a different idea on it, but, uh, you know, it's, that's kind of what I've seen. I've seen, you know, commissions do, you know, hire somebody right away or do an interim or do an RFP. So it's just, it's a matter of what you all have the comfort level for. Claire, can I ask you something? Even though the newspaper only comes out twice a week now, uh, it's still available online. They can still pick up that information online to look at it again, correct? Yes, it'll be posted on the city's website. Kurt puts it there, and I'll also put it uh, advertised through the Florida Bar Association. I think the, the problem is there's a stipulation uh, on, on the requirement to advertise for uh, proposals. And number one, it usually has to be a, uh, a daily circulation. Obviously, we don't have that now because of COVID-19. So, uh, but... You, know, you do have to post it in the newspaper, and I think the problem is not the Wednesday, Sunday, it's just that their deadlines for getting an add-in are like where they used to be two weeks. Now, it, sometimes it can take four to six weeks to get an add-in. I think we were looking at doing an ad for something, Clara and I, and the deadline already passed, but the, you know we, we just decided that we were gonna do it. So it took, I think, four weeks for the, uh, you know, for the cycle to come around that we could get the ad posted. So, you know, there's some, right now we're in kind of uncharted territory with what's going on and I, the newspapers are feeling that effect as well. And I don't think it's just here with our, our local paper. I think that's happening on a national basis. 
Well, I must say, I, I tend to agree with Commissioner Andrews. We've got enough on our plate right this moment. Do we want to be looking at bids and interviewing attorneys in 30 days? Or do we want to get started on these other projects and then when we have more luxury of time to meet with these folks? Well, by putting that on a tab uh, for, say, another meeting, that would still give us enough time to sit down and discuss information with the attorneys as they come in. So it's not like it's going to be next week or two correct. weeks from now. That's, so we that's still correct. have plenty of time to get this done. I mean, if we put, I would, if you do put it out, I would say put it way out like 30 days. Um, we didn't put in here any hard deadline that we would make the decision. I'm assuming we would interview people and see who we're comfortable with. Or yeah, we may be 60 days out, maybe more than that on on getting someone, but I think it, it uh, I don't think we would be good stewards of the city if we didn't at least talk to some other firms and see what's out there. Um, Trask and Associates is a good firm, but there are other good firms out there also, and I think we kind of owe it to the residents of Madeira Beach to at least entertain other law firms. I guess That's the question is, do we want to hold off for a month on this one? Yes. I don't I mean, see any reason why we shouldn't, to give us the time that we need to sit down with them. So, Doug, did you make a motion? I didn't make a motion, but I, I you know, my would be to, let's let everything stabilize around here a little bit. Let's get through what we're going through. Let's get the beaches open. Let's get the city back up and running. And then we can have this discussion when we kind of know what's going on first. And who knows, we may end up liking this character in the back there and want to keep him around. So, um, you know, I, I just think that's probably the best way to do it. Because if, if, even if we do this in 60 days, if we're going to change direction again, um, you know, that, that doesn't really say much for, you know, the stability of what we're trying to do. I'm not against it. I just think, let's put this, I'm glad we have one now. It's great that we have <laughs> Well, now that we have an interim, I do feel I'm that really too. happy that after five months we finally have one. I'm, I'm really happy about that. However, I just think right now, let's just, you know, this is kind of, we're on, in uncharted waters. So let's just kind of take a deep breath. Let's get through the next couple of months, and then we can certainly bring this up in June or so. That would just be my suggestion. So I'd like to make a motion to take this off the agenda uh, for the time being. Do I have a second? A second. City Clerk, will you call the roll? Vice Mayor Andrews? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Douther? No. Commissioner Price? Yes. Mayor Hendricks? No. With that, this meeting is adjourned.